Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with part two of the 16th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. We're going to be taking a look at one of my opponent's hands, and we're going to see if he butchers it or not. <laughs> so, uh, Jay Carchark raises to 60 with, or on the, on the cutoff, and Soul9 calls the button here, and we're sitting with pocket eights in the big blind. I think calling here is really the only play. So... Uh, Kid Poker here does call, and I think this is a very fine and standard call. And he gets what looks like to be a dream flop because it's virtually impossible for J Card Shark or Soul Nine to have anything too strong here. So J Card Shark bets 120, and Kid Poker either has to decide to call here or check raise. And I think a check raise is probably going to be a little bit better than a call because if you call, and J Card Shark has like a weakish hand, he's just going to check back the turn and then get to a cheap showdown. Whenever you have a set, you always want to be trying to get all the money in because, you know, you have a set, and which anytime you have the nuts, you want to be making a pot. So a check raise is to 400, and I actually think this is a fairly large check raise that is going to get Jay Carchark off of a lot of hands. Like if Jay Carchark's sitting here, who's me, if he's sitting here with Ace Jack and gets check raise here, he's probably just going to find a fold. And I know that sounds a little bit tight, but whenever you get check raise in this spot, your opponent's either going to have something like top pair, which is you know, probably going to have Ace Jack in not great shape, or he's going to have a very good draw. And if if um, Kid Poker has a very good draw, Jack Nine isn't in fantastic shape e either. So this is a pretty tough spot if Jay Karchak has Ace Jack, but I think he will find a fold. And the last thing you want whenever you have a set is to get your opponent to fold all of the made hands, besides like Ace Queen or better. So right here, whenever uh, Kid Poker raises, I think it should be something like 300 just to try to rope in. J Card Shark's entire range of hands like King Jack, King Ten, Ace Nine, stuff like that that he may peel with and just try to get two pair. But he does make it 400, and J Card Shark surprises him by shoving. And at this point, J Card Shark's range is, like I said, probably like Ace Queen or better, and that's it. So, and and good draws. Obviously, if J Card Shark has a good draw, he's going to go all in. Obviously, we're in fine shape against the good draws. And then you have to think about the the two pair hands that we are ahead of. We're we're ahead of Ace Eight, which is going to be about very tough to have because we have two eights. Um, Ace King, which is obviously very likely. And that's really about it. So, Jay Cardshark's made hand range here is Ace Queen, Ace King, Kings and Aces, which is sort of cool because we're sitting here with two eights and it looks like the nuts, but really we're not going to be in that great a shape. So let's let's go over here and pull this up. Let's type in the board. Let's give let's check out only J Card Shark's made hand range. Let's give him aces, kings, ace, king, and ace queen. Let's give us pocket eights. And we actually are still in pretty good shape, mostly because of the ace king and ace queen hands. And I want to make it clear, though, that it's not like we're a monster favorite. Notice that we only have 70% equity with the pocket eights here. It's not like we're a super lock. Obviously, if Jay Carchark only has these, like a no aces and kings, you see that we're a huge favorite. This is how you want to get it in when you have a set. You want to have all the equity. <laughs> but uh, right here, he doesn't. So it's still going to be a pretty easy call because, like I said, we're going to have like 70% equity or so on average. But I don't think it's like the windmill slam dunk call that most people, that most people think it is. And I think it's a pretty cool spot. You're never going to fold the eights here, but just realize the situation you're putting yourself in if you get shoved on. And you always need to be thinking about what's going to happen if my opponent does play aggressively against me. And in a lot of cases, you're going to find yourself in pretty bad shape. Let's actually go over here, and um, instead of it pocket eights, let's say we have ace eight offsuit. Let's sort of get, give Jay Carchark the same range. Jay Carchark cannot have ace eight because more eights are possible. And you'll see here, if we have ace-8 and check raise this flop and get jammed on, and Jay Card Shark's only jamming made hands, which of course will jam some draws. I'm not even going to put him in. Um, you'll see that ace is actually behind this calling range, which is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, a lot of players just never even think about that. And you'll see that king-8 is even more crushed. Because now Jay Card Shark has outs with ace-queen. So be careful whenever you check raise in spots like this. Obviously the set's fine, but um, you got to be careful. So 
if I was in Kid Poker Spot, I would have raised a little bit smaller. But besides that, I think he played the hand fine, and he actually just ran into a cooler, and Jay Card Shark had the nuts. So, if you guys have any hand histories you'd like me to go over, please feel free to send them in and leave your comments. I'm more than interest, or more than happy to reply to whatever questions you guys have. I'm here to try to give back to the poker community in a free podcast for you guys, and you know, I want everyone to improve because it makes the game better in the long run. It makes the game interesting and you know, tougher. And a tougher game is a fun game. So, uh, leave your comments, post your hand histories, and I'll be back next week. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.